I am so excited to be filming in our new test kitchen. And what do we have today but someone who's gonna help us really understand how to stock this kitchen. Um, I'm here with Melissa Coleman, who you might know as the Faux Martha. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. This space is beautiful. It's I'm so very I'm so beautiful. excited to have you giving me advice today. Mm -hmm. Your new book is called The Minimalist Kitchen. Mm -hmm which is an ode to kind of keeping it simple. Yes. I think we all get kind of excited. I like how you talk about when you were registering, when you got mm -hmm. married, and like, there's all these things, and there's everything you can have. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, we should really think of our kitchen as like an extended closet, yes. which is a metaphor that I love. So when we're thinking about how to kind of organize our kitchen for mm -hmm. those who already have a kitchen but want to kind of redesign the space. Yes. How do you start when you're thinking of like, oh God, this is overwhelming, what yeah. should I have? Yeah, I like to think about functionality. So design is easy. It's pretty easy. For you, maybe. Yeah. From a former designer. Right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but think about the function first, and then you can always layer in beautiful design. Hmm. And the kitchen is the most high-functioning space. You're using hmm. it every day, multiple times a day, and yet, it doesn't function really well. Even me, as a designer, I was a food blogger, and my kitchen wasn't working, and I didn't even know how to make it work until mm. I decided I was gonna quit the kitchen <laughs> or fix it, and then this book was born. And so where do you start? You know, if you're looking mm -hmm. at your kitchen, you have all these gadgets, you have all these items, you have yep. all these drawers that are disorganized. Yep. So what's the first thing to tackle? So this is like kind of a zoom out idea yeah. or the way that I approach things, but start to notice your habits, which is hard when you're in a new space because mm. you haven't built your habits. Right. Quite what are my habits yet. today? Yeah. Yeah. And if you yeah. are in a new space, then put things, put everything in a spot and then begin to notice your habits. Like, mm. is this working? Can I get the utensils to the dinner table fast enough? Is it clunky? Like, what are you intuitively doing? I mm. like to think, I used to be a graphic designer and I designed websites and user interface was really important. Yeah. And we, when we designed, we wanted to guess the next step. And that's what I'm doing in the kitchen. I took that brain into the kitchen. So how do I guess my next step? Like, where is my little clicker going to be? I want mm. that to happen in the kitchen. So it just functions really, really well. Yeah, you want to like think through mm -hmm. your steps and sort of how you move when you do this. Right, steps. exactly. Trace, trace your steps. It, mm. Throughout the whole book, I say pay attention to your habits. You mm. will provide the best answers to yourself. Like you always have the answers. It's really hard to get them out and see them. So just start paying attention to your habits, almost like you're auditing right. yourself in the <laughs> kitchen or in your closet, wherever you are. And where are sort of the first things that the biggest mistakes that people make? You know, is it sort of the placement of things? Is it the having too many things? Like, yeah. where is the first place that people really go wrong? Yeah, I found personally that I had too many gadgets mm. and not enough food. <laughs> so my pantry wasn't all that well stocked. After we had my daughter four and a half years ago, we ate exclusively from the pantry because no one was <laughs> shopping. Right. And my pantry wasn't even that well stocked. So at right. that point I learned I need a really well stocked pantry. Mm. I need to pare down my ingredients and stock those ingredients exclusively so I can just count on them because you need to be right. able to count on things in the kitchen. And what are some of the pantry staples that you think everybody should have that you mm -hmm. can always throw into a dish? Yes, yeah, so I always have, I call it an all-purpose pasta, kind of like my all-purpose flour. I have mm -hmm. one all-purpose pasta, one all-purpose uh, brown rice that cooks mm -hmm. in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It cooks in the time it takes to cook dinner. Um, oats for the morning. I stock a lot of grains, wholesome grains, mm -hmm. because it's the base of any Right. meal. I at least know where to start. I can grab and a grain. And you know you'll be full yes. if you have that Exactly, you as well. exactly. And then what about the gadgets? You know, you mm -hmm. talk a lot about the gadgets that you need that are sort of your workhorses that, mm -hmm. and versus the ones that you really don't. Like, what are the gadgets that you come back to and what are the ones that you think just kind of take up space? I mean, in the yeah. end, like, we know what gadgets are taking up space. Totally, don't totally. Use. Actually, I walked in and I saw your Dutch oven mm -hmm. out. I think a Dutch oven is such a good example of a minimalist kitchen. Mm. It's a Dutch oven, it's a slow cooker, it's an instant pot, it's a stock pot, it's, it's beautiful, a serving dish, it's yeah. a serving dish. Mm. It does everything. And when you can find things that hit those multiple functions, then mm. you don't need as much around. Also a really good chef's knife. That's so basic, but mm -hmm. it's the thing I find myself cleaning the most every day and a really good spatula like I like a single seam spatula mm. so it's easy to clean and it's sharp on the edge it scrapes everything it's mm. high heat so you can use it 
in your Dutch oven or when you're making a cake. Mm. Those are, would probably be my two favorites. Is that approach also for shopping? I know for a lot of people, yes. the issue is just the time and the energy mm. of shopping and going, you know, are there certain things that you can buy to always have on hand? Which mm -hmm. means like if you have certain things in your pantry and you have certain things in your fridge, you'll always have a right. dinner on the table. Right, so I buy bulk in some items mm. and then even the items I can't buy in bulk, I'll mm. go to the grocery store and I will buy them in bulk. Multiples like, of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I have a favorite cracker and so we'll buy a couple boxes of crackers and it fills up our container. Mm. And then I use these OXO pop containers. You have really good containers, have a container for every ingredient you're keeping stocked. And then if they're clear, then you can see where they are in the pantry. You can easily retrieve them. You right. can easily refill them. How do you do meal prep where it doesn't feel like a dreaded event? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have felt that yeah, and wondered okay, how yeah. could I get out of this? How do I yeah. get out of this? But how do I still get to the table? So there's a couple of recipes in the book that you make it one time and mm -hmm. you make a bunch yeah. or leftovers that would automatically mm -hmm. produce leftovers and then you can tuck it into another meal. Mm -hmm. So there's these refried black beans that you could serve on fajita Sweet. night mm -hmm. and then make it into a breakfast tostada or a sweet potato torta. It just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Or you could Pickle your onions. I love to quick pickle vegetables. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with quick pickling, yeah. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a preservative and they last in your fridge for like a month or more. Yeah. I don't even want to say. So you just have things at the ready. I also have mm -hmm. this large batch, a couple large batch meat recipes. So you cook it once. It takes about an hour to two hours depending on what you're cooking. Put it in the freezer and then you've got these little portions of really good well-cooked meat mm -hmm. at the ready. So these things, you do one big thing and then it lasts for you a long mm. time. And a lot of these are quick cooking because I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. When you begin to create space for yourself to notice things, you will notice things. It will provide answers and you mm. can just slowly start to delete things. Mm. I recommend to do things so slowly. Mm. Like This is not a fad. Right. It's not an overnight thing. Well, the book is The Minimalist Kitchen. You can also find more recipes at thefomartha.com. Thank you so much for being here Thank and for having helping me. to minimalize my new kitchen. Yes. I really appreciate it. I minimize. Min min yeah, minimalize. So minimalize, maximize. Maximize. Yeah. We're maximizing my minimalist kitchen. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs>